What is going on you guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to downgrade any app to any version on iOS 7 and I'm also going to be showing you guys how to fix the iOS 7 app store because it is currently not working on this green iPhone 5c. Now this tutorial is going to be specifically for devices that are running iOS 7. Uh, this device here in particular is running 7.0.3. Um, I haven't personally tested this out on iOS 6 or any other iOS so if anyone wants to give it a try be sure to comment down below and if it does end up working for you that is a tutorial I can make in the future. Let's get right into it. Now real quick one of the first things you'll need of course is a jailbreak. I ended up using what is known as the legacy iOS kit, but in this video we are not going to be doing a jailbreak tutorial just because every single jailbreak is unique, but the process is very, very simple. It takes under like 15 minutes. Um, so yeah, I got the jailbreak on this device and I'll have the links down below to that as well. But once we are jailbroken, you'll notice here that there's nothing on this iPhone. I actually did a fresh install of iOS 7. So this video is going to assume that you are running just stock iOS 7 and you're not signed into your Apple ID. But if you are, that should be okay. You can probably skip a couple steps in this video later on. Uh, but you'll notice here that if I go into settings and I uh, open up the iTunes and App Store, you'll see that we are actually not signed in. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'll do is open up Cydia. Cydia is the app um, that installs once you jailbreak a device. And let me turn up the brightness there just a little bit. We're gonna go into sources here and we're gonna click on edit and add. And the first repo we're gonna be adding here is going to be repo.legacy and this keyboard is so small, uh, legacyios.com. And just go ahead and click add source. And this is gonna add the very first source that we're gonna need for this video. So just give that a few seconds. Okay, so once that is done, you'll see that we have the repo right over there. We are going to install one more repo, go into edit and add cydia.invoxyplaygames.uk. Sometimes it does get stuck on that verifying URL for like a minute or two, so that's totally normal. All right, so that did take about a minute and a half, but once that is done, we are going to be installing four separate tweaks. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually just open up the legacy iOS repo right there. Just go ahead and click into all packages and we're gonna click on a downgrader and simply click on install, but don't install it yet. Just click on continue queuing because we're gonna be able to install all four of these tweaks at once. And then we're gonna go back and then scroll down just a little bit more and we are going to be uh, installing the iTunes Store X7 tweak. Go ahead and click install, continue queuing. And then we're gonna go all the way back here and then click into the Cydia Invoxy uh, Play Games repo, click into there and then install the Checkmate store. And then once again, we are going to queue that um, and then go into your search bar and simply just type in here, App Sync Unified, it should pop up. Um, that is the incorrect one. Let's click on that again and then go ahead and continue to queue that. Now there is actually one more tweak as well and I'm gonna go back and just type this in. This is going to be preference loader. And the reason we're installing this is because um, for some reason without this tweak, sometimes they don't show up in your settings. So this should hopefully fix it if you are having any issues. But if you're able to install tweaks otherwise and they show up in your settings, you can probably skip this tweak. Uh, so it's gonna look a little something like this. We'll just go ahead and click on confirm. It's gonna take a few seconds because we are installing like five tweaks at once. Um, and then this is completely normal. We are going to need to do a hard reboot once this is uh, resprung. Is resprung a real word? Um, we'll give this a second and then we'll go ahead and power it off and then turn it on again. Um, so we'll give this phone just a second to boot up again. All right, so now that we're booted up back into iOS 7, the first thing we're gonna do now is actually sign into our Apple ID. Now you probably remember the beginning of this video, I said that if you're already signed in, you can probably skip this step, but if you aren't, be sure to follow all these instructions. Um, very carefully just because it's very important. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do in our uh, settings here is of course just go into the iTunes and App Store and just sign into your normal Apple ID. Um, make sure that it's actually one that you can receive uh, your two-factor authentication codes from. So I'm gonna keep this phone handy. Uh, but let me go ahead and just type that in real quick. All right, so now that I have my Apple ID and password there, I'm just gonna click on sign in. And then you'll notice here now that on my actual phone, I should be getting the notification and it's there right now. Let me just type in my passcode and um, we'll give it a second. Looks like I did have Twitter opened up there. Um, I guess I was able to sign in automatically, which is really weird. I'm not 
quite sure why that happened, but um, usually what happens in this case is if you get a code and you're still not signed in, you're gonna have to enter in your password as you normally would once again. So if your password is banana and your code is one, two, three, four, five, six, you're gonna type in banana one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it should sign you in. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm actually not sure why it signed me in. It didn't even ask me for my two-factor authentication. So that was very weird. Um, but now, I mean, we can open up the app store and hopefully it'll work. And sure enough, it does, which is super cool to see. And of course we are signed into our Apple ID so we can actually go ahead and start downloading apps. Now, real quick, one thing I wanna mention here with the app store is it's very important to learn how to use the iOS 7 app store because it is you know, slightly broken. So let me show you guys what I mean. So if I type in something like Facebook, right? You might be tempted to just click on search but this isn't actually gonna show you guys any results because the app store is like partially broken. So what you have to do is actually click on the result itself in the drop down menu. And that's how you'll be able to see all the apps that you want. I learned this the hard way, but again, this is like more than 10 year old software. So, you know, it's not gonna work. Uh, as perfectly as it once did. And then if you go into your purchase history, you'll see that sometimes your purchased apps will show up here and sometimes they won't. But let's actually get some apps onto this device. Now I'm gonna switch over to my computer here real quick and this is gonna be done through another website and I'll have a link down below. I actually don't remember how I found this website. I found it like a couple years ago and I just so happened to have it bookmarked uh, on my computer. And so I was like, this would be such a cool video idea for you guys. So let me show you guys how this actually works. Now, the reason why you'd wanna install an older version is because it's actually really fun to just install random apps on your device. Um, and you can experiment and see what an app used to look like back in 2013, or you could even go as far back as like 2012, 2011 if you wanted to. So it really just depends on what app version was supported when iOS 7 came out. And this is where it kind of becomes trial and error. So let's say if we wanted to install Piano Tiles. We'll use that as an example because that is one of my favorite uh, games. I'm gonna type in Piano Tiles App Store on Google. And the reason I'm doing this is because I wanna click on the actual Apple Store link. Make sure you're doing this on a computer so you can actually see the URL. And then at the top, you'll see that there's actually an ID inside the URL. So what you wanna do is just copy and paste that ID and then we wanna go into this special website here. I just wanna give a huge shout out, by the way, to this person. I don't even know who they are. I think they're a developer, but enderspurl184.github.io, shout out to you. I've had this link saved for so many years. So yeah, I'll definitely have this linked down below. But all you wanna do now is simply just paste that into your app ID and click on go. And it's gonna show all the different versions of piano tiles that were released uh, throughout the years. I mean, dating back all the way as recent as 2018 and then it goes back to 2014. But this is where it gets tricky and this is where it kind of becomes trial and error because you won't be able to see the dates on some of the versions and because iOS 7 came out in 2013, I mean, there's no dates here, it's completely empty. So you'll have to test and see which app version works. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste or I, I guess not copy and paste, but I'm just gonna go ahead and take a look at this number here, 5953. And we're gonna go back to our iPhone 5C right here. And we're gonna go ahead and see if we can actually downgrade this app. So let me go ahead and just unlock this. And one thing I forgot to say guys, by the way, is uh, make sure we have our a downgrader enabled as well, which is right over here, and just go ahead and enable that, and that's gonna allow you to actually downgrade these apps. So we'll go back into the App Store, and what we're gonna do now is just search up the app that we want, and the really cool thing about this is, even if you've never downloaded this app before, and it's the first time you're downloading it with this specific Apple ID, it'll still work, which is super, super cool to see. So yeah, I don't think I've actually downloaded Piano Tiles on my main iPhone. So I'm just gonna click on Get Install, and then you'll see that there's a little pop-up here, and then this is where we pretty much write that number from that website. So in this case, it's going to be 595353709. So let's see if this works. I don't even know if this version is from 2013, but it is downloading, which is cool. And sometimes it might say something like app not available. I think that just means that there was never a version available in 2013 for iOS 7. So some of them will work, some of them will not. So while that's downloading, let's go ahead and actually find another app just for the fun of it. I'm gonna go ahead and just type in here, Despicable Me App Store. I never played this game, but we're gonna see if we can get Minion Rush on this iPhone. And then same thing, just copy and paste that 
uh, app ID into this website. We'll paste it there. And it looks like we have a lot of random versions here. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll all the way down. And I'm eyeing this number 6361. And look at this guys, we got piano tiles already. And we can open it up and actually play the game. Check this out. And it looks like we got the game center animation, which is really cool to see. And go ahead and skip that. And, you know, let's actually, Wow, that is a lot of fun. Um, let's go back into the app store here because I do want to show you guys one more example just for the fun of it, but we'll type in here Despicable Me and um, I'm pretty sure it's this game right here. We'll go into install and I will simply just enter in that number now, two, six, four, five. Let's see if that goes through. All right, so that's downloading. So we'll give that a second. Now, real quick guys, just a quick disclaimer. When you are downloading these apps, they're coming straight from the app store, so they should be completely safe. But I will say, whenever you're running an older version of any app, I mean, there's no security out there. So I would be careful with, you know, signing into these apps. I mean, most of them probably aren't even gonna be able to sign you in anyways, but just a disclaimer, be careful with what kind of information you put out there. But looks like we got Minion Rush uh, downloaded, so let's open this up. And I've actually never played this before, but hey, that's pretty cool. So it looks like we probably got an app from 2013 because a good way to tell is because it's actually filling the entire screen. Uh, because you guys probably remember with the iPhone 4S, they had a much smaller screen, so some apps will have a black border. So this is a pretty good sign that this app was optimized for iOS 7, which is pretty cool to see. And take a look at that. We got all our little minions here. Um, now, I'm not gonna be playing this game on this video because that's not what this video is for, but I just wanted to show you guys here that it is possible to literally download any app on the iOS 7 app store. As long as it was once supported on this device, you can download it, you can experiment with it. And I think this is gonna be a lot of fun because there's millions of apps on the app store. So. Go wild guys, have fun, and let me know if you guys have any questions. I hope this helped you guys out as well. And uh, if you guys have any questions or need help, be sure to join my Discord server, it'll be linked down below. But anyways, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.